So just quickly, we'll review what we all the relationships we derived last time regarding heterogene heterogeneity. So the first thing we talked about was heterogeneity and permeability. And so in the illustration there, the colors represent varying permeabilities from grid block I minus 1 to I to I plus 1. And so what we did was to try to determine, you know, we defined um, the flux going from I to I plus 1. We defined some inner block permeability Ki plus a half. But we initially didn't know exactly what that should be when you have varying heterogeneities. And so what we did was we investigated um, this equation if we solve for the pressure drop and then we split the pressure drop into two pieces, a piece that goes from I to I plus a half and a piece that goes from I <coughs> plus a half to I plus one, then in those subregions, the permeability is constant in the green and in the yellow, and we can write down those two contributions. And so that's what's done at the top there. And then when you add them back together to get the total pressure drop from I to I plus one, you get this equation, and after some rearrangement, you can see that what we called Ki plus a half has this form here. Right? And this is called the harmonic mean, right? the harmonic average. And it's always going to give you something less than the geometric mean. But the reason we use it in this case primarily is for when we have no, f no permeability, right? So if we go from one grid block that has permeability into a grid block that has no permeability, we don't want flow into that grid block, right? And so in this case, the harmonic average will give you the correct zero flux condition at the boundary. Right? And so then using this inner block permeability, we define the inner block transmissibility uh, using it. Right? And so then we have this guy, which will plug right into the equations we derived in the control volume form of the finite, uh, the discrete equations. So then we ta also talked about varying uh, delta x. And in a one-dimensional reservoir, the reason you might want to do this is around wells. Right? In a two-dimensional reservoir, you might have other features like fractures or something where you want more resolution. Um, and we'll talk about you know, <coughs> how that looks in a two-dimensional two reservoir soon. But here we, we define now the inner block transmissibility. We also have, we still have the inner block permeability, but now we have this delta x at i plus a half, which is just the average of the two delta x's. And then if you plug that in, you perform the same operations we did before, splitting the pressure drop, working through all the details, you, s you find that this is the inner block permeability. You can also do the same thing for area, adds an additional complexity, and now we group the terms Ka and delta x into the I plus a half, and then this is what you get here. That plugs back into the inner block transmissibility equation here. So you have the sort of the, the, the permeability and the, the reservoir properties or the discretization properties here, and you have the fluid properties here. Okay, and we didn't talk about how you would do the fluid properties, but there's a slide in the notes on it, how, how you would interpolate the fluid properties. So typically your viscosity and your formation volume factor would be a function of pressure. Right? So one thing you can do is you can interpolate the pressure somehow. Like, So you define the pressure at the I plus a half time step. Interpolate the pressure somehow, and then evaluate the pressure, evaluate the fluid properties at that I plus a half time step that come from the interpolation between I and the I plus one. Okay. Another thing you can do is just you can average the fluid properties themselves. So the difference here is here you're, in you're doing some effective weighting or averaging of the pressure and evaluating the fluid properties at that pressure. Here you're taking the, the fluid properties themselves at the pressures of the grid blocks and doing some interpolation on them to evaluate the I plus a half. And then later we're going to talk about upwinding when we talk about multiphase flow. Again, now we have these inner block transmissibilities. They plug right into the equation that we derived when we derived the, when we, when we did it from this sort of so-called control volume form. And then we get 
when you assemble them, so this will be for a four grid block system, when you assemble them, you get this total transmissibility matrix. Now this guy, if you're doing an implicit solve, you would need to invert, and you can't invert this because it's singular. You would apply some boundary conditions. If you had no flow on the right, if you had no flow on the right, then we see that this goes to zero. And if we have a constant pressure boundary condition on the left, those are the two standard boundary conditions we've been using, then this becomes effectively 2T1. And that's shown on the next slide. So again, if you look at the right-hand side, which is the nth block, or in our four grid block system, it's the fourth block, then there's no flow going out. Therefore, that equation equals to zero. Therefore, Tn plus a half equals to zero. Likewise, the equation for the flow between, this is the sort of zero dummy block on the left-hand side where the constant pressure boundary condition is uh, applied, and then you just look at the flux between this point and the wall, which covers a point delta x over two, and then you just plug it into this equation, and eventually you see that that t half becomes effectively two t one. So then you'd plug those back in here and here, and then you can invert this and you can solve that equation. Okay.